Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst things Apple has done. For more videos on business, entrepreneurship, and success, check out our channel, Context TV. How many times have I hit agree yeah. to that and I've yeah. never even read one line of it? I'm sorry, Gavin. It's Apple Maps bad. The company saying, we know that some of you feel Apple has let you down. We apologize. For this list, we're looking at some of Apple's business decisions that have been considered less than stellar. This includes both hardware and software changes, as well as company policies. Did we miss any worse decisions from the former home of Steve Jobs? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. The Demise of the Home Button With the introduction of the iPhone in 2007, Apple set a bomb off that forever altered the smartphone landscape. Did somebody say calamari? A former market once held exclusively by business users was now open to the general masses. Physical keyboards and clunky interfaces were replaced by a single button and a big screen. And on the front, there's only one button down there. We call it the home button. It takes you home from wherever you are. And that's it. Competitors soon followed with similar type devices. And everyone became used to using a home button on their phone. So when rumors circulated in 2017 that Apple was retiring the button, many longtime fans were put off. And no home button on the iPhone 10 means you have to try to erase 10 years of muscle memory and relearn some basic day-to-day -day tasks. Despite the initial resistance, iPhone users were happy to gain more screen real estate, however. And even the competition followed suit. Number nine, the puck mouse. This, as you may know, is our mouse. And uh, some people don't like it. In the early 1960s, Douglas Engelbart invented the first computer mouse. Since then, there have been countless variations of this novel piece of computer hardware. From trackballs to vertical mice and everything in between, plenty of variations have been attempted. In 1998, Apple opted to release their first mouse that used the new USB interface. Forever trying to distinguish themselves, Apple's best idea at the time was to turn what was basically a hockey puck into a mouse. However, the shape wasn't highly praised, but the fact that it was USB made it very convenient. Forever considered one of Apple's worst products, the device was universally hated by its users. It was awkward to hold and repeatedly spun in multiple directions. A quick slap shot in July of 2000 by the Apple Pro Mouse finally put an end to this terrible design. Some people think that this is the worst mouse in the world. We'd like to change that. And today we are introducing a new mouse. Yay. Number eight, hooked on iTunes. Originally designed to be nothing more than a media player, iTunes ballooned far beyond that. And so I think it's fair that we can now change rip, mix, burn to buy, mix, iPod. For years, many iPhone and iPod users were chained to this legacy desktop application. Users would have to sync music libraries to their devices instead of simply copy and pasting like with other devices and music software. Whether it was how slow the application ran or the seemingly endless run of updates it asked for, iTunes eventually became a serious crutch for many of Apple's most loyal fans. How many times have I hit agree yeah. to that and I've yeah. never even read one line of it? Thankfully for Mac users, it has now been retired and replaced by standalone apps like Apple Music. The future of Apple Music our iTunes is not one app, but three. Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, and Apple TV. But Windows users, we're sorry to say you might need to keep it around a bit longer. Number seven, the launch of Apple Maps. In iOS 6, we have built an entire new mapping solution from the ground up, and it is beautiful. From the onset of the iPhone, Google Maps was the navigation app of choice. However, a dispute with Google's exclusive rights to turn-by-turn -turn directions on Android changed all that. In September of 2012, Apple Maps was announced to replace Google as the default mapping application on iPhone devices. The goal, go head-to-head -head with Google for mobile map domination. Upon its release, Apple received major blowback from users regarding their new map offering. Many places were misspelled or omitted entirely. Don't tell me this is Zoom bad. I'm sorry, Gavin. It's Apple Maps bad. Map images were hit and miss, and in some cases looked more like a theme park ride than roads. It was so bad that even Apple's CEO Tim Cook made a formal apology less than a month after release. Come on, Apple. You can do better. Number six, the tax man cometh. 
Tax season is always looming over us, and for many people, it means a refund, or paying back what you owe. For Apple, however, it was reported that they made use of some creative accounting to dodge paying large sums of taxes on their profits. And they moved these profits to Ireland, obviously because they have a very sweet tax deal with the Irish government. That means that they have to pay very, very low taxes. Due to unique tax laws, Apple has been able to retain much of its profits by moving its money into offshore accounts in Ireland, the Netherlands, and even the small British island of Jersey. Now, most companies in Ireland are supposed to pay what's called a signature tax of about 12.5%. But today, the European Commission revealed that Apple has been paying way less. The European Union ultimately fined them more than $14 billion in back taxes. I have no current plan to bring them back at the current tax rate. All right, is that Whether the same way of saying unless we, retur we reduce our tax rates, you're not bringing them home? Is that no, the same way? Uh, no, I don't think it's the same, right. sir. How's it different? They did eventually bring some of that profit back to the United States, but to the tune of a $38 billion tax bill. Number five, Epic Games versus Apple. Since the launch of the App Store, many developers have complained of Apple's high cut of app profits. Many feel the 30% royalty to Apple is just too high. For Epic Games, the makers of the game Fortnite, they decided they'd had enough. It's not just Epic Games. Spotify, Airbnb, Tinder, Facebook, and Netflix have all had disputes with Apple over App Store rules. In August of 2020, Epic updated their iOS version of Fortnite, which gave gamers the ability to buy in-game currency from the video game developer at a lower rate, instead of full price from the App Store. As quickly as the update went in, it was removed by Apple. This has been brewing for quite a while. The CEO of Epic, Tim Sweeney, has been angry at both of these app stores for quite some time. The issue? Money. And who gets to make it? A lawsuit followed, citing Apple's anti-competitive practices. It further escalated when Apple threatened to revoke their developer license, threatening all games using their licensed Unreal Engine. That was later blocked in court, but the battle between the two continues to this day. We shall prevail. Number four, so long, headphone jack. Apple earpods are the most popular headphones in the world. And with iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, we're moving to connecting them over lightning. First it was the home button, then came lightning ports instead of USB, then, once again, Apple decided to break with tradition and removed yet another vital part of the iPhone. With the release of the iPhone 7, the beloved headphone jack was axed from the smartphone's hardware. This, in turn, caused major backlash from both users and business insiders. Why have so many of us been so reluctant to get rid of this? Well, there's the cliche that change is hard, but it honestly goes beyond that. You know, the cord on the headphones also serves a functional purpose, whether you're reaching for them in your bag or trying to make sure the right doesn't get separated from the left. Many felt that Apple was forcing the use of wireless technology that wasn't quite ready for the mainstream. Others were mad at not being able to charge their device while listening to music and having to carry around another dongle. I'm so used to my headphones and it's really inconvenient. The port remained on the iPad, but has not been seen on their phones since the original removal. Number three, planned obsolescence. With a yearly cycle of new phones, Apple's critics have often wondered if the devices were made to degrade over time on purpose. Let me just list them for you so you can see if your phone is one of the ones that's affected, the iPhone 6, 6S, SE, and iPhone 7. It turns out this was actually true. The company released a statement in December of 2017 admitting to the practice. The company is saying, we know that some of you feel Apple has let you down. We apologize. They stated that older iPhone devices were purposely slowed down to help maintain system performance. The company had already experienced issues regarding their batteries, but many fans weren't buying that excuse. Apple acknowledged the problem and said iOS 10.2.1 would reduce the amount of unexpected shutdowns. Online petitions and even a class action lawsuit were filed against the company for their deceptive practices. They did eventually provide functionality in the devices to turn off these new performance features, but by then, the damage was done. Number two, high prices. One thing that many consumers can agree on is that Apple products are expensive. The original Apple II computer sold for around $1,300 back in 1977. Kids can teach themselves arithmetic, or the family can invent their own Pong games. The possibilities are endless. It's called Apple II. 
only a few years later, the likes of Commodore, Atari, and Texas Instruments would sell other personal computers for less than half that price. Even in 2021, whether it's a phone or a computer, their prices continue to be much higher than many of their competitors. There's even an official term for this phenomenon. It's called the Apple tax, which describes the extra money customers are willing to pay for an Apple product over a competitor product with similar features. Apple claims the higher price is due to the superior quality of their products. Yet the before-profit cost of their devices is comparable to and sometimes lower than their competitors. With loyal fans continuing to line up for their hardware, a lower price is not likely on the horizon. So that brand loyalty translates into a premium that they're able to extract uh, from customers who are unwilling to switch out of the Apple ecosystem. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable, or should we say dishonorable mentions. It's never a good time to buy an iPhone. Do we get one now or wait for next year's model? If you don't need that new phone, and you don't want to spend a ton of money, I still think you should wait and go for the iPhone 11 at that point because chances are it's going to be $100 to $150 less than you would pay right now. The Apple Store. Maybe they shouldn't call themselves geniuses. Lately, however, that positive image is being tarnished by stories of customers being wildly overcharged for repairs in Apple Store. Not supporting Flash. Maybe this wasn't such a bad idea after all. The way we've succeeded is by choosing what horses to ride really carefully, technically. We try to look for these technical vectors that, that have a future and that are headed up. And, you know, technology, different pieces of technology kind of go in cycles. The bending iPhone 6. Phones shouldn't bend like silly putty. A lot of users have been uploading complaints and even photos to social media saying that after they kept the phone in their pocket for hours on end, they pulled it out and it seemed to have a curve to it. Want more mojo? Context TV produces original, high-quality videos on business, entrepreneurship, and politics, but from a different point of view. The battle is being fought between Netflix and YouTube. The Federal Reserve should remove all of the current board members who served during the fake account scam. If you want exclusive interviews with industry leaders, in-depth media analysis, and documentaries with a fresh take on the state of business, check out Context TV. Number one, Foxconn working conditions. Do you have any comments on what's going on at Foxconn because of all the press around? Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. We're pretty on top of that. Like many other tech companies, Apple handles the manufacturing process in countries like China. Foxconn, the electronics manufacturer that makes Apple's devices, has been repeatedly accused of unethical working conditions. An exhausted workforce, people sleeping on their breaks, others falling asleep as they work. 60-hour work weeks, forced accommodations at the factory, and $100 of earnings a month are just the tip of the iceberg. Employees reportedly exposed to deadly toxins, suffered loss of feeling in their extremities, lightheadedness, and even the inability to use certain limbs. The pressure and working conditions in one of the factories even pushed some employees to take their own lives, forcing the company to install nets to prevent further attempts and to pledge wage increases. To their credit, Apple has worked with Foxconn to improve the situation. But the jury is out on whether things are really any better. What do you want the people who end up buying this to know about you? I want them to know me, she says. I want them to know we put a lot of effort into this product and when they use it, please use it with care. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.